its anticipatory anxiety happens in relation to deprivation. If the child is deprived, parents are deprived, they become more and more anxious. As we have seen, the mother waits out, waits on the road for the child to come back from the school. She will call up friends, relatives. Child may be happily playing in a garden, but mother will get so anxious that the child will be hurt, child will fall down, child will have injuries. I remember my childhood, my legs were always torn, always in bandages. All the places I was hurt, because as a child you are supposed to play and enjoy. At this characteristic of coming late, if the child has got extra class, she'll be worried. She thinks that the child might have met with an accident or the child has been hospitalized. They will start making call to the teachers, friends, relatives. And she will walk down to the main door. She'll go to balcony. And this is not one day. This happens every day. If the child develops fever, she thinks of the last possible illness. That is, it could be typhoid, it could be chikungunya, it could be dengue, and the worst possible. One evening fever becomes a tuberculosis because she has read somewhere that tuberculosis fever comes mainly evening or nights. This is the kind of anxiety. It could be a simple viral bacterial infection which will settle down within 24 hours. But no, she thinks that it's a last stage. If the child gets headache, she thinks that she has tumor. It could be cancer. She would call up doctor. She would go for consultation. Once the doctor says there is nothing wrong, she walks out. Again, she will open the door and go inside. Are you sure everything is fine? She will keep on going three, four times. She will call up. She will not only restrict to one doctor. She will go to many, many doctors just to confirm. And she needs assurances. She will go to another doctor. She will take that doctor's opinion. And the panic is so strong that even she will ask the receptionist that, do you think that this doctor is good? Do you think that the child will be all right? So this is the kind of anxiety mother expresses. Now, in this, that is anticipatory. Now, all these three anxieties get reflected throughout the life. It's not just that today you get anxiety and tomorrow you get a different kind of response. So, just, you know, with the fear of examination, the person may develop diarrhea. If he has to give a lecture, he may develop palpitation or sleepless night. These are all anticipatory anxiety. Anticipatory anxiety is before the event happening, before anything negative happens. If you think it is anticipatory anxiety. Now, if you become restless, you start walking up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. That is agitational. Agitational anxiety. And if the person starts crying, starts sitting in the corner, not participating actively, it becomes a depressive anxiety. So we have anticipatory, agitational and depressive. 
Okay. And what places this anxieties can crop up? It can be just during the interview. While giving a lecture to the audience. On the night of honeymoon. The person is not able to perform. Okay. Or with a child. Even if you pour little water on the head for cleaning the hair. While taking any tour. Appearing for visa interview. Just a simple thing. Going in the lift. Or crossing the road. In the middle of large crowd. Or taking a beautiful balloon ride. Flying by aeroplane. Taking bath in a closed bathroom. I remember of so many parents. So many girls. Who keep their bathroom door open. Why? Because they feel suffocated. They think that something will happen. Going at the sea. Going for swimming. Rock climbing. Mountaineering. Crossing the bridge. Sudden noise. If there is a sudden noise, they will get scared. And if they have experienced something negative, anything which happens to them, there's a recall of negative experience. Walking in a congested place, driving in a congested road, heavy rains, thunderstorms. Now, these are the experiences which we get in our life. A normal person would be very calm. There's a beautiful case which we have treated and a wonderful case of my life. There was an exporter who was exporting garments and he had to travel frequently. He had to be to many countries. Unless he travels, he will not be able to get the business. So, so many times, even after checking in, after sitting in the flight, halfway before the takeoff, he would start shouting. He would start, you know, making so much of noise. He will even try to run out of the door and he would get off the flight. That was a big problem. So many times the flight had to be delayed. To that extent that some airline stopped taking him as a passenger. His health went down. His business went down. He could not travel. He could not get the orders. We studied the case completely. And the case was Kali by 200. Just few doses and the patient recovered completely.